Welcome to our infused chocolate fountain. Um, I'm Tracy, I'm with the Waken Bakery, and I am here at my very first green market, night market, also known as New Ever. Um, I wish I could say that with a better French accent, but I can't. So tonight's been great. We've had a lot of people coming through here tonight. I got to hostess the medicated chocolate fountain uh, for this holiday season. It has been a big hit. And uh, I gotta admit, it's been a really great night. I haven't done one of these events before. I don't typically vend, and I am almost sold out. So uh, we've got about another hour to go, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be coming back to the green market. It was pretty awesome, and uh, I haven't even got a chance to go look at the other booths, but I'm going shopping later, definitely. These are what we've got left. It's our cereal bars. So we've got our, let me see, that is a s'more. So that is graham crackers, marshmallow, and chocolate. This is an old school recipe I've been making for a very long time. Rice Krispie Squares, the classic. And then we're going a little look. So we've got Fruity Pebbles cereal bars and Cocoa Puff and Marshmallow cereal bars. Also, so this is our cereal killer selection. Everything is on sale for $5 each, including great pixie sticks. One of the signature things we make at the, at the Wake and Bakery. So uh, it's almost over, we're almost done, and the holidays will begin. Merry Christmas. Help yourself. on earth, whether to choose jail or to die in a hospital. I don't know what many of you would do with the given that choice, but I can tell you what these people have chosen. We have chosen to fight. Yeah. We have chosen. Yeah. Right. Well, you're right. we, we have chosen our health and we have chosen to sacrifice our liberty for the health of others because we know this is the med medicine that works. We know that prohibition has only provided harms. We know that Project Claudia was a waste of your taxpayers' dollars and will continue to be a waste of your taxpayers' dollars as these young people have to access legal aid to fight these ridiculous charges. Shame! Shame on you, John Tory. If you would like to consult the experts in medical marijuana, please talk to the patient advocates and the caregivers who have been doing it for almost two decades. We have been fighting really hard to make progress in this drug war, and we are so close, but this is where we need more people now than ever to join us and help us fight, because we are sick, and we are tired, but we are not fucking giving up. Save our dispensaries, save dignified access. Thank you. I'm Tracy. 
Tracy's on the mic. She's on the mic. I got two I you dog him a lot, but I'm drinking my head. You know what I'm saying, guys? It's a hard good time. You know, this Tracy. is Sadie, the wonder chihuahua. <laughs> she comes from a long line of stoner dogs in the community. Her, um, I guess we'll say, her, her great-grandmother is Tara, Mawa Tara, 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 Tara Cartwright, or who goes by Tara Marijuana um, on Twitter, I think. Um, she's an activist that now lives out in BC. She used to breed chihuahuas, and she sent a chihuahua to Sarah Sunday, the producer of the uh, Karma Cup. And her chihuahuas had a puppy, and Sadie is one of them. Um, <laughs> And so now I have a you know, long line of stoner chihuahuas. <laughs> so I am at Trinity Bell Woods Park. <laughs> See, I told you. <laughs> I have a very territorial chihuahua. Very protective. Very protective. Police dogs beware. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tracy Curley, and I'm actually at the Trinity Bellwoods Park across from the um, Green Market, which is happening over at Allaire Vaporizers right now. Um, so there's a whole bunch of uh, bakers and uh, small cannabis businesses or craft businesses that are there um, selling their wares and promoting their products, which is pretty awesome. And then here in the park, we've had a little bit of a uh, community potluck and discussion session about the um, new uh, accessing cannabis for medical purpose regulations that were actually released this morning. It was a, a lot of reading. There's a lot of new. There's not a lot of regulations in there for um, licensed producers, um, guidance for healthcare professionals. A lot of changes. Some of them really, really great for patients, um, and that includes uh, the ability for healthcare professionals now to administer um, cannabis in hospitals. Um, which is amazing um, because that's re really been a barrier to access for patients that are actually in a uh, hospital under palliative care and fighting end-of-life pain and actually um, can't use their cannabis because uh, they're in a hospital. So we've got that. Uh, nurse uh, practitioners will now be able to sign uh, paperwork in provinces where that's allowed. Um, and uh, not only the patients covered under the uh, small scope of the Allard injunction will be able to grow, but all medical marijuana patients will now be able to, uh, to grow for themselves, um, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and we're going to get some barking going on over here because we have two small visitors. Just uh, warning you here now. Yeah, a pretty historic day. Now, there are some, there is some speculation, of course, that this is a stopgap measure. Um, to uh, just basically be uh, not be in um, contempt of the Allard injunction, um, that there may be changes to the program as we go on, and I think um, we will definitely see that. There are some uh, things that were alluded to in the paperwork that have not been explained yet. Um, one of those things being what a licensed or who a licensed dealer might be. Um, so we're not sure whether or not that means uh, licensed dispensaries, um, but as it's uh, clearly stated so far, dispensaries aren't in the new plan, so that may very well be us pharmacies or a liquor store model or something we're not uh, sure of yet. So there's still lots to learn, but again, um, it's, I, it's years and years of doing this now and seeing new regulations come down under the conservative government. Um, wow, this actually really, really does feel like a win. Like. Um, regardless of what's gone on with the project Claudia raids, um, the Crown's unwillingness to prosecute and, and really enforce um, regulations right now. Um, some uh, people have now gotten multiple charges and usually that would uh, result in serving a, a minimum of 90 days and them losing their bail. Um, that has not happened. We're seeing people uh, still out on bail and, and uh, things are, are certainly moving forward in that direction. We've actually gotten some good news here. So maybe this is the, the last dying breath of prohibition. Um, there are some people that have some issues with some things in the regulations, again, the dispensaries. Edibles are at risk as well. Um, so we're not sure exactly what's gonna happen with that. Uh, butane and solvent extracts um, have definitely been banned in this. So I think we're gonna see some difference, uh, some enforcement on the production and maybe um, on the dispensary side coming. So uh, 
we'll see where that brings us into the fall. My name is Tracy Curley. I am a uh, medical marijuana patient's advocate here in Toronto and uh, Weed Woman Canada. I think this uh, is awesome. Um, I walked in and there are so many different products available and new bakers and uh, new vendors. Uh, I was speaking with a couple of activists here, many of us who uh, bake, have historically baked here in Toronto, have been the bakers here in Toronto, um, myself, Amy Anonymous, a few others. We all do other things. Um, baking was just something that we did out of necessity because somebody needed to do it. And now there's so much growth in that market that I am very excited to say, I might not have to be making candy next July if there's this type of growth across Canada. Um, so I'd really like to see more of these products happen across Canada and, and there being some sort of growth in this market under the LP development um, as well. Maybe if there's partnerships uh, coming into legalization, we'll see some really awesome shelves in our grocery stores. Yeah. Don't <laughs> yeah. Chef Media, Green Market. This is Sadie the Chihuahua. And you're watching Dope Chef Media. Right it up. Alright, here's the thing. Here comes legalization, right? But cops and politicians are stealing this industry from the people who built it. They are stealing it from the people who sacrificed their lives, their freedom, their families, their homes, and they're calling us criminals. I've helped patients access. At this point, when we're looking at legalization, we're looking at a loss of access points. We're looking at a loss of variety. Even now, with the bottleneck that is in the um, current license production system, there is a loss of THC content because there's a fucking bottleneck in genetics. We are the only ones that can actually save this industry. We are the only ones that can actually continue to overgrow the fucking government. <laughs> I encourage you to contact your politicians and ask them if there is a shortage in the medical marijuana supply now, what the fuck is going to happen to patients when recreational use is legal across this country? Who is going to fucking suffer? It's going to be the people that have suffered the entire goddamn way and have been taken advantage of by doctors who charge for prescriptions, by clinics who char overcharge for, for meds by licensed producers who now think that it's actually okay to um, limit, limit production so that they can charge more for specific strains that are medicinally beneficial. I'm getting sick and fucking tired of hearing how Julian fucking Fantino is going to now provide marijuana to Canadians? How fucking dare he? How fucking dare any of these bastards come in here now after calling me a criminal for 15 fucking years? Come in here now and tell, tell me that they are just businessmen. So here's what I want you to do when marijuana finally becomes legal in this country. I want you to go to your local fucking dealer. When marijuana becomes legal in this country, I want you to boycott the OCS. The only thing that the OCS stands for is Ontario Cannabis Sucks unless it's grown by one of us. Frankly, I'm tired of the government telling me that I have less rights now on legalization than I did a decade ago as a patient. My rights of a, of, as a patient are, are things that were fought, fought for for 20 fucking years are now actually being limited. The children that I have been able to help may not be able to find help now because the government is telling doctors not to prescribe to anyone under the age of 25. <laughs> Fuck the parents that are parents of the child, a six-year-old child with a seizure disorder, right? They're not going to stop us because we're still keep, going to keep providing access. We are going to keep providing help. And
and, and there's no substance. Look at the numbers here. We didn't have a permit. We don't have a real stage. This is the exact same setup. Um, Chris and Aaron, I don't know where you are, but thank you for keeping doing this. This is the exact same setup we had at 420 College Street. Um, what did you say, 11 years ago? Thirteen years ago. I see, I'm having a hard time with the math. I'm an old stoner now. Um, but this is the exact same setup. And that, back then, I think there was about 40 of us. So, uh, hey, thanks for fucking showing up. Thanks for getting your voices heard. And uh, again, tell everybody you know, if they want to actually make effective change and tell this government to fuck you, then yes. Boycott the government run stores. Boycott the government growers. Um, and absolutely, the day of legalization, buy from your local dealer, buy from your dispensary, go out and plant your plants in your front fucking yard. Yes. Okay, all right. Well, I would tell you to vote, but apparently that didn't fucking work for us. Well, look what happened when we voted last time. So, apparently the Green Party agrees with us. Yes, we do. Sign our petition. We want to make it so that anybody... Well, you can get up here and speak when it's your fucking turn. But I can do it. So, so you do Yeah, cool. Alright, so here's the deal. Okay, I'm serious. Buy from your local fucking dealers. Don't buy from the Ontario cannabis stores. Tell your friends to fucking boycott them. Start growing your own. Start selling to your friends. Start baking brownies for your neighbors. Thanks everybody showing up. Light them up if you got them. Buy some if you don't. And happy fucking 420. Where'd you go? <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. So now we can put the business of medical marijuana in the hands of the professionals. At which point, they started to clap and laugh at the arrest of the, of the minimum wage employees that were arrested at dispensaries yesterday. Brutal. So, so that's I stood up, I, I, I shamed, told them shame, because the people that were arrested yesterday are the ones that came up with the business plan that they are counting on for tomorrow. That's the, fucking the estimates of possibly up to 400 people that were arrested yesterday whose lives will now be ruined by cheering. prohibition. And these guys are cheering. I listened to an MP yesterday describe the fact that he self-medicates without a license, without legal access. Yet, if, if it were someone else who had been arrested, he would not be an MP. But I stood in a room full of rich, white, privileged men yeah. yesterday who are, now, who are now planning on taking control of the marijuana industry. And they laughed. And they laughed. Yeah, they laughed at the and laughed. They these complaints were substantive in nature, petitions in excess of 50, 60, 70 people, just to give you an idea of the kind of complaints that were coming forward in relation to these unlawful storefront dispensaries. <clears throat> about saving our patients. Um, I hope that you all, and for all dispensaries that are going to reopen tomorrow, I applaud you. Yes. Keep opening, keep opening new ones. <laughs>
and some of my greatest outreach, outreach work and community work on behalf of harm reduction has been done on behalf of dispensaries in this, country, in this city. I have spoken on harm reduction at every major university and college in this city. I have spoken to police. I have spoken to professionals. Do not tell me I do not care about my community. I am an active member of my community. Yes. Yeah. Please, ask the AIDS community and the cancer communities of this city whether or not we are an integral part of this community because we have helped keep them strong, healthy, and alive for almost two decades. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, is I am sick and tired of politicians and the media telling us how bad we are and who we are when we have not been given a voice along the way. How dare you tell us that we have bad business practices when you have not even given us a voice at the table to tell you our opinions. Yes. Yes. So as the Trudeau government, I, I am asking this, as the Trudeau government prepares their task force for legalization, and we know who some of these people on this task force are going to be. Um, Mr. Trudeau, Mr. Blair, the rest of the politicians involved. I am a patient. I have no business interest in this whatsoever. I am more than willing to tell you about everything that has been wrong with the medical marijuana program along the way and absolutely everything that is wrong with the one that you are building now. Support dispensaries in this country. Support patients. Support access. And I'm asking every single person out here, I don't care if you're a recreational user, I don't care if you just know somebody who is, the fact of the matter is, is that your friends and your family do not belong in jail for simply trying to help people. I had to send my patients to the streets last night. And I am disgusted by our city. I am disgusted by our government. Um, I, as a Canadian, used to be very, very proud. I have lost so much hope in the last few weeks. Um, and I'm asking all of you to fight with me and for me, because I too am a patient. And I have, I have been fighting this fight for so long because, like many of us, I have a progressive disease. And I will not be able to fight forever and I need this to be over soon. Um, so, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being here, and keep fighting, and if you need any help, my name is Tracy Curley, and I will help you in any way that I can. When they start talking about the pharmaceutical model, what most don't understand is that what we're actually looking at is an apothecary model. So this is an herbal medicine. This is a natural medicine. This is this is something that we're, we're, we're concerned when they start talking about pharmacies and such like that. When, when really this belongs in an apothecary and exactly. a natural health service. Um, and we're, we keep asking the cities um, to, to listen to the councillors say that the city has no, no uh, right to regulate this and has no responsibility to regulate this. Toronto is supposed to be a, sup a super city, we're supposed to be a world class city, and to say that Toronto can do nothing on this issue is to say that Victoria, Vancouver and Calgary are better run than the city of Toronto because they have figured out a way to do it. So to say that there, to have a city councillor say that there's no solution to this issue is not only insulting as a, as a citizen, but it's insulting to our intelligence. It is. It, it really is, because there's proof happening right now across this country that regulation is possible yeah. from a city standpoint. I don't own a dispensary. I'm not representing a dispensary. I am a patient. I've been a patient in the city for 15 years and an advocate. What this means is that the, the inadvertent benefit of this storm that they call Project Claudia is for the first time patients have actually gotten dignified access in this country, something the federal government has not managed to be able to do in almost two decades. So what we're asking is that they, they continue to allow these these dispensaries to exist, but regulate them. Make sure that there are regulations regarding signage. Make sure that we regulate so that we, we control odor and smell and our impact on the neighborhood. There are harm reduction strategies that the municipal licensing and standards can do to mitigate the perceived harms of dispensaries in these neighborhoods. And Dispensaries have served as a harm reduction tool in this city for almost two decades. What is about to happen is we're looking at a federal postal strike. 
which will take access away from patients. As, as these city councillors and everyone keeps saying that there is a legal access point, which most people don't understand, is that there are serious barriers to that access point. One of, one of them, which will be a Canada Post strike, which means patients will not be able to access their medicine. It's a similar issue that we dealt with at Christmas with uh, delays in Christmas delivery. There were patients that weren't able to actually eat Christmas dinner because they had no medications to actually induce their appetites. Well, uh, so this is my second time back at municipal, municipal licensing standards in the last month. And as predicted, uh, City Council deferred us again till October. So they are passing the buck and telling us to come back in October while they continue enforcement and raids on our dispensaries. So you plan to be back in October? I'll be back in October and I will be at every protest and I will be at everything that I can possibly be at to stop this fucking madness that is the Project Claudia and Toronto cannabis right now. Thank you. Dope Chef Media. Raids at pot dispensaries in Toronto. The activists protested outside Old City Hall today where the accused are scheduled to appear in court at a later date. get marijuana that you have to smoke and that's not healthy for you so what dispensaries have is they they have they make capsules they make lotions they make um, edibles and cookies in different ways um, to, yeah different ways to ingest it so it's healthier um, and the government regulations haven't caught up on that you know I have a friend that his daughter she has severe epilepsy yeah. and they use every medication legally available yes. and he turned to oil and it was illegal. Yes. And so now his daughter she her, was, her seizures are her, greatly reduced. No, she doesn't she doesn't have a seizure I think That's in fantastic. fifty two weeks and she was not walking, talking, she was not progressing and now she's and like she's making eye contact and now and she's, she's walking and verbal. Yeah. Yeah. So you know it's it yeah for, for you know, and, and I've been doing this for how, how old are you guys? All right, so I have been doing this for longer than you guys have been alive. <laughs> uh, fighting the same law the whole time, the whole, and we, we started to make progress. And now that legalization is coming, it's, it's the only way to describe it. It's gotten even more crazy because now these people are coming in and there are companies that are planning, you know, the liquor store is talking about legalizing and Shoppers Drug Mart is talking about carrying it. There's all these big companies that that think that they know what they're doing. But what the crazy thing is, is they haven't come to talk to us, the, 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 the patients, the patients or the caregivers or the people that have actually been risking going to jail to do what's right. Um, because doctors used to just tell parents of, of children like, like your friend, they just say there's nothing we can do. Well, and the doctor said he's very unethical for doing this, but now the doctor is now researching uh, oil because and, it's and I always bad. found it funny because here's here's one thing that that you guys might not know is that um, did you know that water is more toxic than cannabis. You can you can die from drinking too much water. You cannot die from consuming too much cannabis. Peanut butter is more toxic than cannabis, but we still sell peanut butter in our grocery store. Um, not that I am telling you guys are too young to start, okay? Okay? But realize that one of the reasons that we think this law is unjust is because it will not kill you. And one of the ethical things that we always thought was, was strange about doctors is that, you know, they're supposed to be, it's about ethics and the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm. They prescribe drugs all the time that have harms listed to them. And this is the only, this is one that doesn't. You guys are 13. Um, but the other thing is, is that, so this is one of those drugs that won't do any harm, right? So that whole idea of them being able to keep the Hippocratic Oath, we think that they should look at marijuana as a first choice before the pharmaceutical drugs rather than the last choice. So they're looking at this as a medication, not as streets. No, no, where it's tested and where we know that it hasn't been grown with pesticides and where it, it, it's actually um, not, not from just somebody on, where you can get educated so that you know whether or not it's good for nausea symptoms or whether you know it for it's great for migraines or whether it's good for seizures.
Um, so there are lots of places that you guys can go to look up information. Um, and one thing you can do if you guys have really good memories is um, my name is Tracy Curley, like like the hair, <laughs> right? And um, if you guys ever need anybody to come to your school and talk, or if you guys even have any questions, you can find me on Instagram and all those social media, and I will help you with school projects. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, this pro I, the arrest actually happened about a month ago. This one started at 10 a.m. this morning, but there's a series of them that keep going on. So different day, different parts of the city and different days, there's different people out. Okay. Thank you very much for your information. No worries. All right. Have a good day. Enjoy your day, guys. Okay. So talk to talk people, they were saying, and it goes back to we have a place though. But a teacher will allow those students to come up and ask a question. Yeah, exactly. That's that's how you get rid of the ignorance. A local school stopped to ask about the protest and ask, ask about dispensaries and how they're regulated and how they're run. So uh, it was great, an eighth grade class, about 13 years old. So kind of got to explain to them what the issue was um, and uh, how they can learn more and how, uh, how legalization is happening. These are the kids that are going to watch it happen. So uh, hopefully the more educated they become, the better it is for us. And it was wonderful. Like I said, they stopped, they asked some really great questions, and hopefully I will get some emails or some Instagrams um, with some questions for some school projects coming up. They, they were paying attention, and they asked some interesting questions. And even the teacher, herself, the teacher herself stopped the class because she has a friend with a child with a severe seizure disorder. They broke the law to access oil for their child and their little girl hasn't had a seizure for 52 weeks. So the teacher obviously knows that we're on the right side of this and wanted to make sure that the class understood um, what the raids on these pot stores meant. How, how can we uh, regulate dispensaries? Um, there are some great regulations available through CAMCD. Um, and I mean, they're really, really basic. It's be a good neighbor. So make sure that you've got proper ventilation and that your neighbors aren't complaining. Don't let people medicate outside your store. The liquor store doesn't let people get drunk in their parking lot. Um, you know, from the consumer of that, be, you know, keep patient records. Make sure that, you know, your meds are clean and they're tested. There's, there's ways to do this. It's basically, uh, and they're, they're available. You can contact me through tracycurley.ca. I will send you regulations and, and all the guidelines you can follow to keep your patients, your staff, and your dispensary safe. If you live in public housing, you are SOL. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't. I live in a house, I can medicate at home all I want, but I like going to the beach. I like going to the beach and sitting on the bench there. I'm going to register to speak again. They, they, but yeah, we were on the list, and then they, when they realized that we were there to talk about the dispensary enforcement, they, they, they tabled us. And I'm like, look, I followed all the rules. This is what we're talking about because you started enforcement yesterday. Uh, and, uh, and even when it was added to it, I signed up to speak. Well, on yeah, it. and when they added, they deferred and the added, and then they deferred. And so I was, when they deferred it, everybody was angry. And I'm like, it's okay, I'm still on the list. And then they went defer. Thanks for everyone for coming in. We're protesting Project Claudia. The arrest on Project Claudia, again, a waste of taxpayers' money um, to use those, uh, those police resources to uh, arrest people that are actually committing a crime that will be legal within two years. Um, you cannot, the fact of the matter is when you ask, people are talking to you and asking about the dispensaries that were not following the protocols, that were that are set in standards for medical marijuana dispensaries in Toronto. You cannot blame a, a whole industry for the bad acts of one dispensary. That would be like firing the whole police force for the actions of one bad cop. We have been asking for medical marijuana access regulations in Canada for almost two decades. All we're asking is for public health 
municipal licensing and standards and the provincial government to work with us. Okay. So again, all we are asking is for our voice to be heard. We've been shut out of this conversation even though we are in fact the experts in this industry. Keep speaking, keep fighting, and next time we meet to protest, bring a bud. Yeah. 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 Service. Dispensaries serve as an access point.